I love your outfits and your quirkiness. Thanks. The colors. Colors. Duck, duck, duck. I just love it. Yeah. That was a beautiful story about enjoying your appearance. Thank you for sharing your joy. I have a question about the energetic expansion. I felt that in my mind and in my heart at different times, they become became so big there was no felt boundary, but both appeared to contract again later. Why was that temporary? Yeah, thank you for your question, J.R. Um, um, okay. okay, that's where that is. So why why was that temporary it's the, it's that the identity came back so seeking was activated in the person again so there was a belief in happiness being found in the future and then that's and that's that's just the way it is that's destiny no destiny who knows what destiny means but it's the it's predestined it's the way it is that that came back. You didn't do anything wrong because there is no you doing. It just happened. But, but something happened in the external. Seeking was activated, a belief in an idea, a belief in an identity. And then there was the seeking to get freedom in time. And then the contraction starts. Yeah. So it's just seeing through on the human level. If you, if you want to do something, it's seeing through the illusion, you know, the seeking. And then the other practice is coming back to the I am. In a way, that's the same seeing through. It's like the mind goes off, plum, 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 plum. You can imagine it on a horse. It goes off into its story. It's like catching it and then coming back to the I am. When the story is too strong, then you could do a therapeutic practice. You know, like somatic therapy, Osho stuff, chakra work, massage, body release, all these types of things. But when it's not that strong, you just bring the attention back to the I am, and then it'll pull you into the story, back to the I am, pull you into the story. You're not waiting for a point for it to stop. It will just stop at some point. You know, the mind's always like, okay, so is this working? And when is it going to work? And why is it not working? It might take lifetimes. That's what the Buddha says. It doesn't matter that part. It's just the commitment to it. You know, when I was a kid, yeah, there was many things that went on in my child childhood with learning. And I have this sort of personality, and I didn't know this, that it can commit to things. So it can get interested in something and commit to it. So non-duality was the first opportunity that I really got to explore that. I also had it to uh, theatre and storytelling, but I wasn't able to really go with it because I wasn't able to read. So I couldn't really read. You know, if we'd had the internet, I would have got obsessed and learned loads about it. But I couldn't really go to the library and read about it and understand it. With non-duality, I could order online books and tapes and CDs. And I could go to the Buddhist center and get talks. So I could like obsess about it. I have this personality that can... Focus on one thing and be really committed to it. Um, but because I've got these other things, like when I was younger, I couldn't read. It was before really the internet got going. And so I couldn't really do that. And, um, and really, you know, that's, you just got to commit to this subject. It's like, what is most important to you? Getting things in this life. And if that is, be honest. Or freedom and if it's freedom then just commit and if it takes life's times fuck it what does it matter times all the illusion anyway it just feels important to you that keeps making stories about time you're always in the timeless it really doesn't matter one hour two hours five hours ten hours twenty hours it's freaking painful when you're suffering but it will be over and nothing lasts at one point liberation will happen and, it, and then it's like all that time, it never really happened. All that time of, you know, like putting the attention back into the moment and feeling those uncomfortable feelings. But it's just commitment, as if you're learning a musical instrument. Anyone, in a way, can do art or become good at a musical instrument. It's just the amount of time people have to practice. Some people pick it up straight away and they're like, <laughs> straight away. 
and others have to really, you know, practice it. I was never told this as a child, you know, and I didn't really get it. The word, you know, like, yeah. And then I, I got access to this non-duality and I was like, and then as the internet grew, my other passion of storytelling, I'm, I could then listen to books about that and really, you know, dive into that. And now I'm becoming a really good writer, you know, of stories. Yeah. I've just um, finished my first ever novel. It's, I mean, you can't really ever say something's finished because it can always prove and expand. But um, yeah, if anyone is an a book agent or a publisher, please get in contact. Like, um, yeah, it's it's kind of like got non duality in it, but in a very hidden way. And it's very funny. If you watch my videos, I love humor. And it's got lots of characters in it, of animal characters and weird, crazy stories. And yeah, and yeah, just you can take a, um, a risk. You know, it won't, won't, I know you get so many people sending you manuscripts but you can just take a risk like wouldn't it be really freaking cool if I can write a story about non-duality and you could be a publisher and an agent for that yeah I'm only talking about professional publishers and agents I haven't started sending it out yet but I will soon So you just have to commit and then time, it doesn't matter. Like I, I was started writing when I'm 15, I'm now 43 and I've been learning it and studying. I studied at a university all these years and I've never really ever made money from it. A little bit at times, a little bit success. So just commit. Okay, if, if non-duality is what I want, but you've got to make sure it's what you want. If you still want to find the perfect partner or you still want to be this or that, then be honest with yourself. If you really want freedom, then just go for it. Every moment, bringing your attention back like Nisargadatta did to this moment. And screw comparing, screw ideas. And then knowing that there's no one doing it. Amazing. Is that person doing better? Is that person doing better? I can tell you there's lots of peers who I studied with that are so freaking not, yeah, some of them are really famous. Like, like one um, wrote a TV series that did really well. I forget the name of it, but very famous actress in it. You would know it if you're English. Um, they were one of my peers in my writing group when I was just after university, I got into this like writing group apprentice. I don't know what you call that with a theater. Um, yeah. And they wrote that another one writes for comedy on the BBC. I think another one um, wrote and acted in a really great play at the Royal court theater, which is very big, you know, like, so, so many of my peers have done so much better than me in the writing, but yet you, just, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing freaking matters. You know, if there's passion there, like passion in this subject or passion to express yourself through pain or through writing, it doesn't matter. You just keep presenting yourself. Like when you're constipated and need the toilet, eventually it will come and screw time. And screw you being something. You don't need to be something. That's all ideas. That's all imagination. There is no time. There is no you that will ever be a successful writer. It's all illusion. There's just writing happened and that's that. And there'll never be a you that awakens. You're never going to like win and then like, but be like, yeah, I made it. Let me take my bow. You won't care. Because who would be there to care? There would just be freedom. And then you carry on, you know, cooking lunch, making dinner, going to sleep, waking up.
Yeah, thank you, JR, for your question. We really appreciate that. <laughs>